Hello everybody! Today we're talking about one of my absolute favorite subjects. Butter! Yeah! And I'm gonna show you how to make three easy compound butters. Basically what a compound butter is, is when you mix butter with other ingredients and it takes on those flavors. Um, it's a great way to jazz up anything, really. But today we're jazzing up some corn on the cob because it's summer. Fourth of July is right around the corner, and I know we're not throwing parties, but even in our nice social distancing get-togethers with four people, it's nice to have a fun little taste test of, you know, butter, anything. Just, it's nice to have a great meal, and it's nice to get together and enjoy food. So this is a fun way to make your life easier and to bring more flavor to whatever you might be doing this summer. So first up, I'm making a salsa verde butter and we are just using some store-bought salsa verde that's already made for us. So all of that hard work, the blood, sweat, and tears, it is all done. If you do not know what salsa verde is, it's basically a green salsa made with tomatillos and some chili peppers and it is delicious. It is so bright, it is spicy, but it's not too spicy, it's kind of zesty. It's one of my favorite salsas. We eat salsa verde with corn chips, so I figured why not make a compound butter and throw it on some corn on the cob? And that's what we're doing. First, I'm just gonna add some salsa verde to the bowl. And now I'm gonna go with some unsalted butter that is nice and soft. Now every salsa is different, so if you want yours absolutely pureed, just throw everything in a food processor and you can puree it with the butter so it becomes really nice and smooth. But I like the contrast when it's mixed together and I can taste the tomatillos and the peppers. And here we have a salsa verde butter. I have some cling wrap on top of some foil. You can use parchment paper. Now, I'm just gonna put it on the edge here. And use your spatula to kind of form a longer shape. All right, so take your foil and wrap it, wrap this tightly. Cinch the edge with this side. Keep it like this and continue to roll. Our next butter is a spicy honey butter and I've done this before with some buffalo sauce for some waffles but today I'm just going to use a sriracha and some honey. You can use any kind of hot sauce and any kind of honey. Just make sure it's not flavored honey and you can put this on anything. So now we're making our garlicky hot honey butter. So I'm gonna add some honey. You can really use a hot sauce of your choice. I'm using a sriracha. Finally, let's get that butter and mix it up. So before you add any salt, I would taste to make sure it's not already really salty. Just a pro tip because sometimes the sauces you use are salty. And finally, we're just gonna make a really classic scallion butter. I've got some scallions here and I'm gonna start off by showing you how to mince them for your ingredient prep. You can do this a few days ahead. You can do it right before. I categorize scallions as the smooth onion category. There's like harsh raw onion and then there's like smooth, fragrant, nice raw onion. And in that smooth onion category, I have scallions, chives, and shallots. Sometimes red onion, but a lot of people think it's too harsh. And what I mean by harsh is like when you eat a raw onion and it burns and it kind of makes you cry and your nose gets all runny and you're like, this tastes so good, but it hurts. We don't want that in our butter. 
So we're gonna use anything in that smoother category. That's why I love scallions. But if you can get your hands on some chives, I recommend that over scallions just because the size, it minces a lot easier, a lot better for the compound butter than the scallions. These are really thick, but you know, I'm gonna show you how to do it. I'm gonna use a chef's knife today and I'm gonna cut off the green. You have this green end and then you got the end that goes all the way to the white bulb. Cut that white bulb off. And you know, don't throw this away. This can flavor so many things. You can also grow scallions with it. I'm just gonna grab this. I'm gonna separate them from the stock. I'm gonna hold them together. Basically, I'm just chopping them first. And then with this little end here, I'm just gonna use the tip of my knife to just slice down. So I've got these two halves. So I'm also gonna chop this. Get them all in one place. Now, make sure if they're not sticking to the knife. Get your knife, place it horizontally, like so you can rotate the back around the scallions and just start to do that. Another thing you can do is just put these in a food processor. But, you know, if the less cleaning you have to do, the better. Another method is you can just rock back and forth like this. Whatever you like. I like the pivot method, because I find that you get a lot more control when you have an anchor. So when I anchor that front and I can move that back around and it's hitting the sweet spot in the middle of the blade, to me, that's the easiest way to do this. But either way that you choose, you're gonna rock. You're gonna rock and roll it. You're gonna be the best there's ever been. These are almost mints or a few pieces that just I would prefer to be more chopped. And we like to mince because it releases a ton of aroma and also the pieces that are being chopped are tinier, which it's going to blend a lot more nicely in our butter. Okay, and there we have it. Here we have some minced scallions, super simple. If I can do it, you can do it. All right, let's assemble our butter. We're gonna just add in those scallions, some salt, and let's get our butter. Okay. You can also use a standing mixer for this, but I love to just use a simple bowl. There's really something for everyone. I'm not gonna lie, I have been snacking on the butters. Literally just the butter. I've been eating spoonfuls of butter, so it's good. So what I did here, I actually charred the corn on my open flame, um, so on my stove top. And you can totally do that if you don't have a grill. Just be really careful, of course. Don't take your eyes off the corn. Just make sure you watch it so it doesn't light on fire and you don't burn the house down. But I love to give it this nice grilled taste. It gets a lot of smoke as well, which tastes so good. Okay, it's time. Let's try it out. I'm gonna smear it all over. Mmm. Mmm. When in doubt, just have salted butter with corn. It always wins. But these are just a fun way to jazz up that corn on the cob life. And I hope you're eating a lot of it this summer. Well, thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked this episode. I know it's a little different than my usual one recipe per episode, but I thought this was a fun corn on the cob, serve yourself kind of bar. And I, I think it's great for get togethers when we can have those. And it's just fun even for date night to mix it up, have a little fun with it. If you're only feeding two people, you really don't need this much butter. You could just make a couple tablespoons of each and that would be perfect, but you can always keep the leftovers. So I'll put the measurements in the description box below and I might put some of these on my website. Either way, check the description box. You'll get everything you need there and I will see you guys soon. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Bye.